You're listening to Living Podcariously, bringing you real men's perspectives, unfiltered, unapologetic, and uncensored. Recorded live in the Living Podcariously studio in world-famous Cocoa Beach, Florida. Episode of Living Podcariously. What up, guys? Woot woot. Oh yeah. Uh, I am Adam. I'm one of your hosts for the show. Uh, sitting across from me in studio. Uh, I am Tack. And sitting over there in the Lady Chase. Yeah, there's no Andrea tonight. She's oh. she might come join us a little bit later, Tack. I gotta turn on a little bit. She might come join us a little bit later, but she is uh, filling under the weather. So uh, she's taking taking some time off. That's uh, gotcha. She get a little nausea kicking in, you know. It's kind of expected. Just growing with a human. Yeah, yeah. So sitting over in the big recliner, it's Mr. Wilson. What's up, guys? What's up? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, man, we got a lot of stuff to tell our listeners. Holy, Holy shit! Holy shit! Last weekend was dope. <laughs> My God. So for our listeners, you guys know we have a close tie-in with one of Brevard's local bands. Not to itemize them out right now, but because we've got a lot of other friends in the community that are musicians. We've got the guys with True Phonic. Love those guys. We've got the guys over Fuck with yeah, dude. Power Couch. Right. Evan with Power know. Couch. Great band as well. But this recap is going to be about Hot Pink. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh Hot yeah. Pink. So, Jesus, we're just going to kind of open this up for some general discussion here at the beginning of the show. We had the opportunity. We were lucky enough to get in to the Coca Village Playhouse, talk to the director, Stacy, and uh, also talk to the band. They just did the Hot, Hot Pink's The Music of Queen, a tribute show at Coca Village Playhouse. It was so fucking good, dude. Dude, they sold out. I fucking out. love Queen, man, and they fucking nailed it, dude. Yeah, they did. They sold out all three shows. So they had a Friday and a Saturday night show. That was originally all they had. Then they booked a Saturday matinee show, and they sold that one out too. So that's theater seats, 650 or so seats approximately. Mm -hmm. And man, every, there was, every single seat was full, and to include some of the wings, there was some standing yeah, was room. Packed. Yeah, it was, it was nuts. We were lucky enough to be able to use some of our processes and, and our package of services through tax company, through attack films. Mm -hmm. We were lucky enough to be able to go film it. And yeah. prep the video. So part of the thing that yeah. Dichotomy Media does is promotions. And, uh, you know, shooting some promotions for, like, the things that we've done over the Playhouse before or just in general. So we're going to mm -hmm. do some promotions for some of our sponsors. But, yeah, man, we, we were lucky enough to do that. So we put together a really cool team. Uh, Tack was the director and executive yeah. producer for the whole thing. Uh, and he was also a shooter, so he had his camera out there, a, a film, filmography, right. video maker. I don't know what you want to call it officially. Uh, yeah, but of course, Jimmy Klein came out as well because he's also a part of uh, Attack Films as well. Yeah, Mr. Jimmy Klein, and he also runs a company called Jimmy Klein Photography. Indeed. Yeah. Where's your bell at? Where's oh, your bell tag? I don't have it. You know what? I've uh, quarantined the bell for the time being. <laughs> and I say that not for purposes of not having it on the show, but when Alyssa, our, our daughter, was sick upstairs, she had the flu. Mm -hmm. Uh, we she we didn't want her yelling down to get us, so I said, "All right, just hit, ring this a whole bunch of times, and then I'll come up the stairs and see what you need." <laughs> tech's, so tech's kind of sick too; it'll be fine. Just go yeah. get, go get it for <laughs> yeah. It'll be all right. There's only one and type we, uh, of sickness, right? <laughs> <laughs> we also um had some outside that we outsourced. Yep, we sure did. Camera person that was uh, Xavier. Hamilton? Is that his yeah. name? No, Xavier Hamilton oh, sorry. is our buddy. That's our buddy. <laughs> yeah. Cut that out. No, no, that's all right. Xavier Hamilton is a listener of the show. Sorry, sorry. He's a uh, he he's also given us money through Patreon. So yeah, yeah, Patreon.com yeah, yeah, yeah. slash living. Not that Xavier. You gotta hit the plug there, but oh well. Ding. Um yeah, the other Xavier. Uh, so we also outsourced uh to Xavier Landers as yes. well. And, yes. Uh, he's yeah. with XDL Studios. He uh, he came out, brought his 4K resolution. High end DSLR. I don't know. You say the it wasn't acronyms, DSLR. It wasn't D DSLR, but yeah, you had a. I think it was a Sony camera, so it was pretty good. Nice 4K, so should be good. He was. He was brought in. He was a referral, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so our good friends over at Oak and Iron Photography, Kyle and Bianca, referred us to him. I originally hit them up because we had a we had a volunteer uh, who was a shooter who was going to come out and help us shoot, but she couldn't get out of her schedule with work. She she just had a conflict last minute and couldn't come out. So we were stuck trying to fill that last shooter seat 
with uh, with quality because I knew that I knew that she had quality. I knew she could shoot really well, but I didn't know of anybody else in the community. So we reached out to Kyle and Bianca with Oak and Iron. They do photography, wedding photography, things like that. But uh, I said, hey, do you guys do video too? And they said, not really, but I got a guy. So I called him mm-hmm. and he immediately said yes. It was it was not even like a, a hesitation of an answer. He's like, yes, I'm trying to get my name recognized. I want to come out and you know do this with you. I think it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. So he came out. Now, not to mention, so those were our shooters. I, I kind of was a shooter too, sort of. And we'll you talk were, about that later. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, but uh, we had uh, we had some PAs or production assistants that volunteered yep. to come out yep. and help yep. us. So we want to give big props, obviously, to Josh Wilson. He did PA work for us. Man, I was just, I, it was an excuse to run around backstage. Let's, <laughs> let's be fair. Like, the band's dope, and I got to watch their Queen show from 15 feet away, so. Hell yeah. <laughs> we did have the best seats in the house. So. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> to Ricky Rabinowitz uh, and Dan and Stephanie Lynn, they came up to do PA work for us as well. Also. And fucking owned it. Yes. Also, Patreon members. So That's right. Extra thanks. Yes, yes. Double thanks. Absolutely. They all did a fantastic job. It was perfect. Loved it. All right. So I am so ready to talk shit. Do it. So tell us all about your camera operating, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So TAC has a lot of film equipment with the TAC films, just a ton, because they do okay. professional shoots for movies and for, you know, uh, just a ton of stuff. Yeah. Uh, he shot band stuff in the past. So he knows what he's doing. TAC knows, really knows what he's doing. Hmm. Um, I uh, have never held a fancy camera, so I don't know anything about DSLR. I don't know what's better, Canon or Nikon. I don't know any of that shit. Mm-hmm. I know none of it. So yep. I have to take my training and my direction from TAC in this situation. So Andrea bought me as a after Christmas present, kind of just, hey, look, here's a really good deal on something. I'm going to buy it for Adam as a cool little gift. She bought me a um, a knockoff brand of a GoPro, mm-hmm. but it was a really, really good knockoff brand of a GoPro. It was just yeah. like a generic, another version of a GoPro just from another company. Uh, and it shot 4K uh, video at 60 frames a second at 170 degree wide angle lens. So uh, when Tack found out I had that, he's like, well, he and Jimmy got together and did their Attack Films meetings and said, <laughs> we could put that on the end of the jib. Now, a yep. jib is basically like a, in this case, a 20 foot crane, crane yeah. that's, mm-hmm. that swings out and dips low and does all this shit. And it's mm-hmm. controlled back from kind of like the backstage area where I was standing. It's great for production value. Yeah. It, lo- the- it had some really, really cool shots. Uh, but I've never worked with one before. So it's I, tough. It takes practice, especially I, if it was balanced better. I couldn't find all my weights. So uh, yeah, that was part of my problem. That was, yeah, you could see a huge difference. Had it been balanced perfectly, you wouldn't have had as much of an issue, but it still does take practice to. Well, I kind of appreciated learning on it a little bit. Now, not to suffer, it didn't suffer the shots. So the, the shots that we're going to use were the nice, calm, sweeping shots, which were, Mm -hmm. I got a lot of. But you can see when I'm like shifting my weight on my hands, you could see this fucking camera bouncing <laughs> up on stage. <laughs> yeah. It's very easy to tell that I didn't know the fuck I was doing. Uh, you know what, though? What I will say, uh, being right there, it does not look like you don't know what the fuck you're doing. The rest of us who know you don't know what the fuck you're doing, <laughs> we could tell. I guess awesome. I like the first time I watched you put the like the jib arm, the weighted side, like under your legs and just like to give your arms a break. I'm just like, damn. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a small dude. I mean, I'm not yeah. muscular, but I'm not small. So yeah. the, the, keep in mind, this is only a GoPro sitting on the end of this 18, 20 foot jib arm. Mm-hmm. But the weight of the arm, if not counterbalanced, as Tack was saying, it makes the the mechanism on my end that I'm trying to control, and there's a handle to control the basically the camber of the angle for the camera. Man, I was sweating That's fucking cool. bullets up there, dude. It got <laughs> I got a fucking bruise on my hand, but it was dude, it was a lot of fun. So we uh, we <laughs> I had a couple of shaky moments, and yes, I did ah, tuck yeah. it between my legs up in my nuts one time just to give my get the blood circulating back in my arm for a little bit. <laughs> But uh, I think it was really cool. James, the lead singer of Hot Pink, came out right to the fucking GoPro a couple times and sang right into yeah. it. Like, oh, those are going to make such good shots. I hope it's recording. <laughs> <laughs> I also got to give props to Jimmy as well. Like, when we were uh, like trying to get everything set up and everything before this show, like I had issues with the audio recorder. I can up in the sound yeah. booth with the guy. We're like trying to figure it out. And during all this shit and running around and getting this and getting the jib set up and and all this and that, 
this whole time, Jimmy was such a pro, man. He was already getting this backstage B-roll shit that is fantastic. What is B-roll for our listeners who might not know video lingo? B-roll is like anything that's uh, anything extra. So he he was getting shots of like um, James, the lead singer, getting ready. Um, he's getting shots of some of the choir practicing over in the corner. Um, any Anything that's not going to be... Any B roll can be anything. It'd be shots of like a plant sitting somewhere, or I did see you guys hands doing something. I did or, see you at rehearsal, but also Jimmy before the show was like filming some of the the guitar pedals and the snare, the drums, yeah, and, yeah, and some of the different instruments that were out on stage. Yeah, and that's then some all B roll stuff. Yeah, stuff you just cool. splice in during the show or during a certain scene or whatever. Kind of helps with the editing. Too, awesome. So, so you don't have rough cuts. No, I was I was very impressed. Jimmy did a Jimmy did a fantastic job. All, all you guys did. Xavier did a really good job. You did mm-hmm. a good job. I mean, it was. I think I I don't know what the video looks like yet. So mm-hmm. I might be kind of counting my chickens before those eggs are hatched. But uh, I think it's going to turn out really cool. I hope that our our product, our end product, is going to be something that the Playhouse is happy with, and obviously, I hope that mm-hmm. the band is going to be happy with. But I well, think, I'm sure I think they will be. And tomorrow we're going to go grab some more footage. <laughs> yeah, we're going tomorrow at noon um, back up to the Playhouse to get some interior footage of this of the uh, uh, B-roll footage again, but of the Playhouse itself. So Yeah, we want to showcase the actual Playhouse. It's beautiful, so, man. It's yeah, gorgeous. It's amazing. What would you say? Actually, Stacy said it before the show. Was it yep. like 87 years old or something now? The Playhouse... Was founded in 1922, I believe, and don't cr- quote me on that, Stacy. I apologize, uh, but they are officially now a U.S. national um, historical landmark. Nice. So they qualify for lots of additional grants and things like that. That obviously is help going to be helpful for them. However, they're officially a you know a, a, a historical spot. So because mm-hmm. they're so old, and if you know theater talk uh, or especially older construction. That theater is a vaudeville style theater. So back in the you know nineteen hundred early nineteen hundreds and nineteen twenties, they built theaters different than they do now. Now they've got these giant wings that you can fucking put an eighteen wheeler in if you wanted to. <laughs> Not this one. This one has super narrow wings. Basically, as soon as you go off the stage, you only have about ten feet. That's all you got. So yeah. all yeah. those elaborate sets and I don't know things like a eighteen twenty foot jib crane has to tuck <laughs> and fold into ways that it is really difficult to work with. Because Josh and I, so Josh was my PA for that. And uh, this thing is so big and so heavy, it's not on casters. I was trying to think at night how I can rig something to roll it out. But <laughs> with all the cables and cords from the band and stuff, that would be almost impossible. Yeah. However, Josh was my guy, and he and I fucking manhandled this thing out and pulled it out on stage on and off and on and off, depending on the song. And... uh Josh almost learned a pretty valuable lesson that night too. It wasn't just me with shaky Jake hands trying to hold that thing fucking steady. <laughs> yeah, what, uh, what the happened? The front of yours? the stage isn't lit up, and he's real easy to fucking fall off. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. I almost fell on Xavier. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Xavier and Dan, no less. Uh, fortunately, I was I was able to catch myself. But yeah, the I mean, and you got you positioned yourself. So when when Josh would help me, he would carry the long end of the boom out. Uh, to help stabilize, and I would carry the base, and mm-hmm. it was all it was all connected, it was all one unit. Then I would set it down, and then from that point, I'd basically take over. Camera was already rolling at that point. I would just take over the operation and kind of swing it around where where we wanted the shots. But uh, Josh's spot to squat uh, became a hot box, so he was sitting between two of these oh. giant <laughs> lights on the stage, which are these computer uh, animated lights that do all these. I cool was on the same side on the opposite side of the stage. I was in between these two things too. Yeah. Those motherfuckers get hot. Yeah, I was like, and, okay, uh, I'm sitting there. That's where I should go. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I kicked one a couple times. I almost tripped over one one time. I was like, oh, fuck. I hope I don't knock these things over. I didn't know if you even could knock it over. I had no idea, but I was like nervous around them. But. Stacy, uh, Stacy, the director of the Playhouse, Dr. Anastasia Hawkins Smith is her full name. Uh, she pulled me Fancy. aside. She's fancy. She uh, she pulled me. She's been the director of that playhouse for 28 years, by the way. Mm-hmm. So uh, she pulled me aside um, that that evening and said that we were we handled ourselves very professionally, that we made our company look good, and she was very happy with our you know representation and etiquette and stage presence. She she didn't think we got in the way. She didn't think we were you know uh, uh, taking away the vision from an audience to us. So it looked like we. 
just we blended in well. I'm sure our dichotomy media shirts helped a little bit with that, you know, <laughs> said crew on the back. And, yeah. And, shirts were nice, buddy. Yeah, that I was wearing nice. mine still, too. That was a nice. I didn't wear mine tonight. <laughs> oh, actually, I have a. Did, what, yeah, you got yours that night. I did. Okay, yeah. yeah. It was good. It's, they fit good, too. It's comfortable. I, it's nice. I was, they're good shirts. They're I'm scared to wash it, but. Um, the <laughs> guy said, yes. I'm sorry. That was, no, that's perfect. What? So, yeah, just flip it inside out because it is vinyl um, press. So yeah. flip it inside out on cold. Don't ever put it on hot water. Or that that logo and the, the writing and the words on the back will be gone. Ew. So yes, but yeah, uh, my know. boy. My, listen. So in a crunch. So yes, we've got our guys over at Allegro Printing who have hooked us up in the past with really good deals, like on our mugs and shit like that in the past. But it, not not their fault. Their minimum orders are more than we needed. We only needed enough for all of our PAs and our shooters for that day. So I didn't need you know forty or whatever. Prince, I only needed a few. So our boy in the mall hooked us up. Our boy hooked us up. There's a place in Merritt Square Mall called I Don't Give a Shirt. That's what it's called. That's the name of the company. <laughs> I Don't oh, Give a Shirt. Right in, um, right right in the center. Of Macy's? Yes. He sits right in the middle. So I went up and talked to him and I asked for prices and I told him, hey, I want to have like, you know, 12, 10, 12 of these shirts printed. Uh, what would you cost? And he gave me a pretty good rate. He's a nice guy and he did it while I waited. So I brought him the, the graphic and the imagery and stuff like that. And he just, he fucking printed it out and did it right there on the spot. So it took him, took him about an hour, hour and a half, but he, he got it handled. So go see my boy Yasim over at, uh, I don't give a shirt. I don't give a shirt. Goddamn, I forgot the name of it. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, uh, so there's 20, how many songs was there? Twenty. Oh man, two? I can tell you because that set list is still my background. <laughs> this is all open for public at this point, so you can literally go right down the set list if you want to and say the different songs that there were. Oh, can I? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, I'll just go quick. Uh, so they they open with Flash, and then Flash. Awesome opening. Ah. Yes. Yeah, was, By the way, okay. once once we have the rights, once we can air this to our listeners, that's going to be part of what I ask for permission from both the band and the Playhouse for. We're going to play. You know, or make this available to listen to somehow pieces of these songs so you guys can hear them. But yeah. I can't do that yet. We haven't got those official well, permissions yet. Well, also soon a video, too. So Yeah, part of the whole thing we did, <laughs> yes. Uh, eventually, you will be able to see the entire video on YouTube. Well, we didn't film the whole show, so it'll be like That's snippets. Yeah, our produced video. Yeah. yeah. My bad. Snippets. Full songs, but yeah, yeah, yeah. just a full few songs. of these songs. Yes, we'll, we'll, yeah. When we hit one of the songs, Tack, why don't you just say, that one we'll have in full in the video, gotcha. so they'll, they'll know. Okay, cool. So they open with Flash. Mm-hmm. Then they had Killer Queen, Fat Bottom Girls. <laughs> now, whoa, whoa, stop there. Fat Bottom Girls, James did something that was fucking amazing. Again, lead singer, Hot Pink. So just before Fat Bottom Girls comes on, he addresses the audience. This is the first time to actually speak to the audience. And he says uh, says a few nice words and thanks for you know coming out to see us and blah, blah, blah. And then he says, and this song is for those girls in the aisle seats. <laughs> and then he leaves in the, fat, the opening of Fat Bottom Girls. Everybody knew it, and the crowd laughed. It was fucking yeah, great. Yeah. Let's see. Now I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, don't stop me now. Now no. I'm here. Oh, yeah. I uh, want to break free, which was great. Good old fashioned. Another one bites the dust. Again, mm-hmm. that's a crowd pleaser. As soon as that song came mm-hmm. on, boy, th- that audience went nuts. It was yep. cool. Uh, bicycle races. Yeah, fuck that song. How look, do you look, not like that song? I love, let me rephrase that. That was rude of me to say. I, I like the performance that the guys did of that song. All right. They did a great job. And the chorus or the choir, we'll touch base on the choir in a minute, but the choir came in and fucking owned it as well. Melodically and harmoniously, it was great. I personally think that to me, the lyrics in that song and how the song is re- just, it doesn't jive well with me. So it's not one of, but but it is the one song that I will have stuck in the rest of my head for the rest of the night. So Seven Seas of Rye. I knew that entire song. I've never known the name of it. So even now, like yeah. I can't bring it to mind. But I remember looking at it. They started playing. And I was like, oh shit, I do know this song. And I was really excited about it. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Um, You're My Best Friend. Uh, crazy mm-hmm. Little Thing. And then Death on Two Legs. Yeah. Death on Two Legs Which will dude, be on the video. No, Death on, yeah, that, that I was fucking one of, love that one. That was one of the ones that they the band specifically requested we make sure we get video of. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that one that was an awesome song. They enjoy playing that one. That was one they're adding that to their normal like because they do they cover should. music. They should. They're adding that to their normal cover music routines. Mm-hmm. Nice. It's a good one. Yeah, that was um, that was really cool for me because that was I w- I just I took a knee. I was front of the stage. I was in front of the lights like. James the best was seat in the house. Literally ten feet away from me. Like yep. he was blocking the view of the other band members. He's so close to me. So that was really neat. 
Uh, okay. Uh, death, death on two legs. Uh, lazing on a Sunday. That one also will be on there too because I love that, that one so is, much. Is that the one you said your favorite? That's a personal. It's not favorite my favorite, attacks. but but they go it. right into it right after Death on Two Legs, which is also how it is on the album too. Oh, Death cool. on Two Legs, and it goes right into that. One. I think it is anyway, and it's on the same album, um, Night at the Opera. I think it goes right into it, but anyway, cool. they went right into it, and I love it, so it's going to be on there too. So sweet, and then we will rock you. Again, yeah, a crowd knows. favorite. Yep. Knows. As soon as you heard that first boom, boom, clap, God, you could boom, feel boom. it. Yeah, the audience yeah. was going nuts. The chorus did something that was pretty cool. The chorus or choir, I keep saying chorus. The choir they had, they had a 38 person approximately, 38 person choir, which Ms. Andrea Joy was one of the, what was her Indeed. role? She I think she told you what she actually was. She was a um, second alto or something like that. Second alto? Something like that. Yeah, it's it's a role that she normally doesn't get. But anyway, I turned over and looked at them, and all of them were up on their podiums on stage. They were stomping their feet, like keeping nice. it going louder, so it sounded even more amplified through the speakers and everything. So it was pretty cool. And mm-hmm. they're on a giant hollow wooden box. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, oh, there was also um, just before we forget to come back to it, there was another group that was on stage. It was the acapella girls. They were a high school group. Do you remember which high school they came in from? Uh, actually, I think that was the Playhouse Girls. Yes. Um, yeah. Who are you the about? so there was a, a specific group, For, Formata Stars. The Formata Stars. Yeah, Formata Stars. But they're not. I mean, yes, they are high school group or high school age kids. But they're. I think they're I, like 16, 18 or fifteen, eighteen or something. Like they're that. not just from a specific high school. They're with the Playhouse. Mm, I see. But they're uh, they're in that age range. I understand. Okay. But yeah, they're fucking phenomenal. Yeah, they were man. killing it. They did it on hmm. stage that night. Yeah. I don't remember really? seeing them on stage. No, me neither. I saw them out front the night before Friday because I went to see it Friday night as a patron. I went to, and drank beer and watched. To be fair, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know them to be their own group. But when Xavier and I were out front uh, getting pictures of the band during like the meet and greet when it was done, somebody came up to me and told me that like, oh, I'm one of I'm a parent of one of the Fermata girls, and like we came over from this high school. So maybe I I obviously cool. misunderstood what she said, but she ah, was okay. like. Somehow related to that group, and she called them out. She's like, "Yeah, they were up on stage. They were the acapella group." And I was like, "Oh, awesome. oh, that's cool. cool. They yeah, must have. Did, they did that uh, out in front of the theater Friday night. Uh, they're right, literally right on the street." Hmm. I thought, "Well, that was really cool." But that yeah, they're cool. they're amazing. They're an amazing group of singers. So every year at the so the Playhouse has the Stars of Tomorrow, which is a youth program that our daughter is in. Say, that's what Alyssa mm-hmm. did, right? Yeah, and ironically, Bill, the bassist for Hot Pink, was also in that. Uh, <laughs> yes. Jason, our friend from. Uh, Joseph, the amazing technical dream code. He's also been on this a few times, this podcast yeah. a few times. He was also in stars. So there's a lot of people who are in. And he know, was in the hot pink choir too. And so, he was in the choir. That's right. Choir. And so, he was your, what your voice coach. He's my voice coach right now. He's, yeah. He's doing a lot. Hmm. Oh, we so we have a few more songs. Yes. Uh, where do we leave off? Uh, we will rock you. Yep. And then we are the champions. Mm-hmm. Oh, fucking classic song. Uh, I fucked up my uh, boom at that point. I couldn't. I couldn't get out there for we are our champ or we are the champions. Hmm. Um, the recorder stopped, and I thought it was the battery. It turned out it wasn't. It was just freaking out on me. I think I was just getting nervous and hitting too many buttons. Josh was ready to go. I'm like, wait, it's not ready. <laughs> and so he ran and grabbed me another battery at that point. So I missed with the boom mic. I missed that song. So mm-hmm. hopefully you guys got it all. I think we. I don't know if we got it all, but I guess I got some of it. Maybe Jimmy. And Xavier might have grabbed the rest. I don't know, but another another big one that Hot Pink wanted us to get, which was uh, somebody to love. Yep, we got that one. That's one that mm-hmm. I know James specifically wanted. That one. Yep. Um, play the game. Bohemian Rhapsody, of course. Everybody, yeah, we, everybody we knows all of that. Yeah, we got you got play that. the game and Bohemian. No, Rhapsody. No, not, not play the game. Bohemian Rhapsody, but all of Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm-hmm. So Bohemian Rhapsody was their official last song. And they did a, a unique set. I mean, they still have another song Josh hasn't said yet, but they did a unique set. They did um, uh, 8, 10, 12 songs, whatever it is, then did a break for an encore. Mm-hmm. So they le- literally left stage. They left the choir in their place so that you still had the choir up there. So the audience knew something was up. Mm-hmm. They come back out and do those next three songs ending with Bohemian Rhapsody. And then mm-hmm. they leave and come back to and what? do a song from their... Uh, what kind of sucked around. was when they had left the stage, they left on stage left, which is where I was at. And they were all like right there, just standing there with me. And I was just like, you guys are sounding good, man. You guys are fucking killing it out there. <laughs> and I was just giving them a little pep talk. The only thing that sucks is that 
I didn't have a light on my camera, so I couldn't film any of it. It was all just pitch black. Oh. And I was like, damn, that would have been really good to get. It would have been good B-roll footage. Yeah. Could um could they hear you when you were talking to them? Um, I think so. I mean, I assume so. Because there was a couple of times, uh, right before the show started, but James already had his earpieces in, so he could talk to the other band members and stuff. And um, he'd come off stage, and, I, and I, I don't even remember what I said, generic, just like, hey, man, what's up, what's going on? You know, you guys excited or whatever? And he just looked at me and smiled and walked right past me. <laughs> I was like... J- James what? did that from the band? He did. Oh. Uh, I was like, what the... F- he might okay. not have heard you. They Let's, all have your buds in. That's what I was saying. Like, he already had his in. Yeah. And I did not yeah. realize that. So, like, what the? That's not like him. No. no. Yeah. So, they, he just, he stared at me. He knew I was talking to him, but he also knew that he couldn't <laughs> hear me and he didn't want to explain that again. So, yeah. he's just like, ha ha, yeah. yeah, hey, smile. Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, ha. By the way, it is the Fermata. That's F E R M A T A, Fermata Stars. And they're an a cappella, uh, a cappella singing group um, from the Coca Village Playhouse. And, dude, they're. They're as good as like that pitch perfect acapella movie that I watched with my ex wife's daughters when they were teenagers. You know, mm-hmm. they're that good. They're, they're really amazing to listen to. So after they did Bohemian Rhapsody, then the choir left the stage. That was the choir's exit, and everybody gave uh-huh. them a big, huge round of applause and that whole nine yards. Yep. And, and then, then they, they came back with their fucking, their go to song. It's still Queen, but it's one of their songs that they play at every one of their cover band gigs that they get. And it's a huge crowd pleaser. It's under pressure. Under pressure. pressure. Do, 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 do. You know, the vanilla do, 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 ice song, do, 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 yes. Do, do, do. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> you guys, you know the story behind that? Yeah, he got sued big time for it. Oh, yeah. Who did? Uh, the team that produced Vanilla Ice's song. Oh, I meant, no, the original Under Pressure. Oh, no. It was written in like eight hours after like a cocaine binge or something. Really? <laughs> yeah, it has like a crazy back. It was like him and one other major singer from their heyday that they were just hanging out doing a bunch of drugs and talk about david bowie I th- it might have been david because it is it's queen and david bowie that do the song and it so. definitely was definitely was them so yeah they, it's got one of the most <laughs> recognizable riffs i've ever heard in a song of all time i mean you immediately know what song you're gonna well other than the vanilla ice ripoff you immediately <laughs> right. know what's coming up in that song it's so recognizable yeah it's great yeah it was um it was a good way to finish it it's one that everybody knows and it's one that they are unbelievably well practiced in singing oh, yeah. too so singing yeah. and playing so they just went up there they killed it and it was because it's one of their normal shows they did not have the chorus up there either so it was just them yep so like all of like the really hardcore die hard hot pink fans that were right up front like they were really excited about it it was cool we got we got um we got some pictures with like their hardcore fan group too that's awesome we got some pictures with them up front Maybe we can take some of those pictures and add them into the video that we're doing or something. I don't know. Maybe at the end we'll of the trailer or the credits or something. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I think you know a guy, Tack, that might have <laughs> some influence in on that. Yeah, it'll be cool. Yeah. So we had a uh, triple redundant recording. So if anybody, all right, this is going to kind of be a segue real quick. Uh, as a podcaster or as a person who works with any kind of digital media of any kind, you know to back your shit up. You know to have redundant <laughs> recording sources. You know to have, you know, you, you know there's certain steps that you take with your equipment. Well, there's part of a reason. So we've, we've gone several weeks without any kind of audio that's been released for Leaving Podcarious in the Twisted Ten, both of our shows. That goes twofold. Partially, that's because it was the holidays and we were very busy leading up to this hot pink gig that we've got here. So we've had a lot of moving parts in our show and we took some time off. We supported a sponsor for their New Year's Eve day, which was supposed to be a recording day. Christmas was on a recording day. So we had a lot of things that kind of tied Uh, up. A few of us had the flu. I mean, (laughs) yeah, we've been been sick. There's been a lot of things going on, but the recordings that I had from just after Thanksgiving or around the Thanksgiving timeframe, uh, Andrea got me that new camera that I used during the hot pink show. And guess what Adam did? He took his biggest micro SD card Mm -hmm. and said, Ooh, I'm going to put it in here because that's the best card that I've got. And I want to get the best quality of video because the thing records at 4K. I wanted to like take it around the house and shoot some shit and just see how it did. Mm-hmm. Well, as soon as you put the card in there, this camera formats the card to <laughs> match its formatting requirements. Yeah. And of course, that means all of the data that I had not transferred over to the computer is gone. That was all yeah. of the podcasts that we had recorded. Now, <laughs> I'm going to give a quick plug over to an application called Recova. Yes, it sounds funny. <laughs> R-E-C-U-V-A. It's free. This isn't like a promotion or anything. Did you recover it? I recovered what? the A A. Oh, I recovered the data. Oh. Oh, Angela. Jonathan. <laughs> so, Mona. Lisa. 
Lisa? <laughs> no. Who's the other one? Who am I missing? Samantha. Samantha! The most important one, and <laughs> no. I missed that one. Son of a bitch. Uh, what are you talking me? about? <laughs> He's so young. Have you not heard us do this like a billion times? Who's I mean, the boss? Tony Danza? I've heard it, but... I didn't realize it was like a bit. Like I thought it was a bit that you guys did. I didn't realize that was a, from a show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's from Tony Danza from Who's the Boss. This was a show that was really popular and me and Tack were little boys. <laughs> I like the way you said little boys. It's yeah. really creepy. Did it? <laughs> if you would have just said when we were little. I guess that would have made more sense. That makes sense. That okay. that also. But uh, so anyway, anyway, I lost the data. And that, that application, the Recover application, uh, got it back for me, and it's free. So if you're That's a podcaster, cool. fucking download that shit now for for Windows. I don't know if it works on Mac or not, but uh, it found all of the data on that hard drive or on that flash medium, which uh, was, I was fucking lucky for. So yeah, those uh, those podcasts will be coming out. In fact, I released one of them this. Today, speaking of the day we're recording this, so that went out as well. Cool. So, uh, but yeah. So, takeaways from the show, guys. Do we want to? <laughs> is there anything else we want to throw out there for our listeners? Some maybe behind the scenes shit that that we got to do or got to see or got mm, to experience. Yes, one. Um, the the orchestra pit downstairs for uh, your yes. orchestra teams. Mm-hmm. That room is hot as fuck. <laughs> Kudos to those guys who sit down there and play instruments for an hour, two hours at a time. That room sucked, and we were just changing in there. There is, to be yeah. fair to them, there is an air conditioning system somewhere down there. I don't know where it is, and it's I wasn't on the gonna... wall in there. It, I don't think it was on at the time, but yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, now they they by the way during the hurricane when the hurricane came through and fucking tore up all of Cocoa Village, that room was under a foot and a half of water. Wow. All downstairs, that entire pit. All of that downstairs area was underwater, so they've uh, they've been shop vacuuming and getting stuff out of there for for weeks and weeks and weeks leading up to their last series of shows. So yeah, they've that's a tough room. That's a that's a hard room to to operate in because it is below. For I guess sure, it's technically yeah. below the water level. I would I would imagine, or maybe it's just a bad area for water to gather. Both. I don't know. It was cool during at one point you mentioned I had to run and grab you a battery. Uh, well, in that time, because we were storing stuff in the pit, I, I ran around backstage and I got down there. And from underneath the stage, listening to the show. Oh, but that would have been cool. Really cool. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't anything more than like the show just being muffled. But like as I'm walking in there, James is just like stomping around on stage doing his Freddie Mercury thing. And nice. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, shit, he's going to fall through. <laughs> <laughs> so for those Not. listeners who don't know, for the Coca Village Playhouse, they do have you never see it. But they do have a full orchestra, well, not full size, but a full instrument orchestra mm-hmm. that sits below the stage, literally below where the actors and singers and performers are, is where Josh is referencing. And uh, there's a music director there, and you know they've got all of their their orchestra members that sit downstairs. Usually, it's like fifteen, f- between fifteen and twenty people in that little room. Mm-hmm. So you have a lot of bodies in that little little bitty room down there. But yeah, it's really good. But you, Tack, any any takeaways? Something cool to let the listeners in on? Uh, well, it put me on the spots. I don't know. It was just tons of fun, though. I love doing that shit, and can't wait to do that. Do another one. Do, yes. do the next one. And from what I understand, I guess they're going to be covering Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, man. I think it's their next one in April. Pink Floyd, Pink Dark Floyd Side of the Moon. Tickets are on sale now for them. That's up at a Time Out Sports Bar. They have a huge warehouse out back. Uh, that's a venue. So that's where they're going to be performing that one. This one's not going to be at the theater. It's going to be at a bar. Bar restaurant, whatever. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, dude, it's on four twenty. What's uh, what's the place <laughs> yeah. called? It's called like Time Out Plus or something. Time Out Sports Bar. I don't know if it's Time Out Did Plus they, or not. That's a good a, question. I'm gonna go back. Uh, yeah, to I saw it was Time Out Sports Bar Plus or some weird yeah I don't think thing like I'm that. For it. That's um, cool. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I've been there a couple of times. That's where, in fact, that's where they had all of the rehearsals. Andrea can't really represent herself very well well tonight, but she's been rehearsing like a banshee with this for prepping for this show. And uh, she she rocked it out. So what I'm hearing is that you think Andrea sings like a banshee. That's <laughs> what I heard. wait a minute now. Hang so, on. So uh, it's called uh, Time Out Plus. That's the name of their new venue behind Time Out. Sweet. So there's, there's Time Out Sports Bar and then Time Out Plus, which is where they're playing at, which is up in Coco. Nice, 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 nice. Cool. Deal. Well, that's really cool. What about you, Adam? What was your cool behind the scenes? Yeah. Like what? Um. So. This happened before the actual recording. Uh, in ta- you guys are completely aware of this, but something that was unbelievably helpful for us and what we were trying to accomplish as a team. So, Dichotomy Media is our company, 
and we wanted to represent this video and audio production the best quality we possibly could. Mm -hmm. So our shooters were good. So we had Tack and Jimmy and Xavier doing the high definition shots with me running a little silly, you know, it's still 4K, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, the audio is where I really cared about making sure we had good quality. Oh, yeah. So I, I forgot that I wanted to mention that too. We had triple redundancy at this point. So Tack had his recorder, which mm -hmm. is a really nice quality. It's way better than the one that you're listening to this show being recorded on. Uh, I had my recorder set up. Well, mine was plugged straight into the mixer. Yeah, basically so everything that came out of their speakers is what yeah. TAC got through mm -hmm. electronically, not through just audibly. Um, so, yeah, you were tied right into the mixer. Mm -hmm. I had my recorder set up to capture the audience reactions. Basically, uh, it was set up to have no filters. It was just whatever was happening in the, the ambiance of the room. And the ahs and the yays exactly. and all that from the crowd. That's and, what we wanted. And then our boys, I will say special thanks to Jeremy, to Gavin, and to Brian. And I'm sure I'm missing a few people over at the Playhouse because they really hooked us up with something that was really yeah. special. They gave us, uh, they told me ahead of time, and I picked up a hard drive and brought it up there. They said, if you bring us a hard drive, we can give you every single instrument and microphone on its own channel in stereo so you have the ability to make your own master mix for this video that you guys are producing mm -hmm. so we had every individual microphone and, and mix uh, the entire mix we had, we as had a all the drive. audio files from the entire show so like if the kick drum had its own mic we have just the kick drum we have like just one choir member or we just have just james vocals like everything is on its own channel and I had a huge heart on the other day <laughs> listening to all that and just messing with the mix and just that was great. Is that is that something we can combine and give to Hot Pink? Just be like, well, oh, that's what I was kind of thinking too. I mean, but also there really wasn't much for me to really mix. I could do a remix, I guess, but yeah, I mean, it they, was already pretty much done very well already by them. So yeah, that, I mean, the sound tech did yeah. all of that in advance, right? He, Brian and Gavin, mm -hmm. yeah, they're they're yeah. amazing. Those guys are. Or, or maybe that one's Jeremy, but those guys, I don't remember the roles for each one of them necess necessarily right now, but those guys are fucking spot on. They know what they're doing. I'm pretty sure that they all have degrees in their own speciality because, man, that, that soundboard, that was intimidating as hell. All of it's motorized and, you know, it's all moving. Motorized faders and stuff. Yeah, yeah it's all presets all and doing. Because oh. all it is, all that is when you get those motorized faders, it's just a control. That's all it is, just a. Because you can get a huge, like, what's called a Control 24, which runs, like, Pro Tools and stuff like yeah. that. It's just a control device for what's going on with your computer. It's all it is. It's like that, a big mouse. Whatever. And, uh, it's awesome. Does no, it's it light, great. Does it I light use, up and move? Yeah, that's yeah. That's all I need. Yeah, yeah, that's what, uh, <laughs> it's cool. Because we, when I went to audio engineering school, we had them, too. And we used to, and it was just so much fun. It was, it's great to work with. And, and they do have, like, those demo modes where it just shows off everything. You can, <laughs> and you put it in that demo mode, and all the faders move like a big snake across the board, and all these lights light up everywhere. It's just, it's like, tries to sell itself. I don't Can you, know. Is there like a demo button? Could like the sound guys at Cocoa Village Playhouse, they like tune everything in? There's like, okay, and demo. And they just look like they're playing a massive, just like, <laughs> like they're just playing an instrument, all the lights are going. Well, kind of, because that's what around. they already did when, when certain like scenes were happening. The light guy would, on the other side, would have all of his programs preset, and mm -hmm. it would do that. And then the sound guy would have all of his programs preset. Because they knew what they wanted to have happen. Yeah. And he would literally, when it came to the next song, all he would have to do is hit one button. Because he's already put all the work into it. Mm -hmm. And you would see every fader just shh, all over the board. It would right. all move at once to to tune it in just perfect for that song. Yeah. It was nuts to watch. So it automation, because just like during, because they'll just go through and move faders here and there. And it records all that movement. And so then you could just go back in the track and then it'll go just how it was. There's you know? some like a big time sound guy out there that's listening to our podcast going, listen to these guys. They're impressed with the little shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, Motorized faders, big fucking deal. Yeah. I've been dealing with every day for the past 15 years. You know, you know what? That's I fine. It's cool. If you're that guy, give us your old shit. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yes. And like if yeah. it's, if it's no big deal to you, just like we'll take it second hand. <laughs> you know, I am uh, not for saying nothing here, but uh, there's another cool podcast in the area that their listeners got, uh, went out and got them an h6 a zoom h6 i'm just saying you know <laughs> one of our listeners uh hook us That's up sad. with one of those we'll like that uh yeah. we gotta get yeah. them on the show again yeah. We're, we're yeah gonna have them down again I, we gotta schedule something with those guys yeah don't know we're referring to the guys yeah, over the down. burn it down podcast yeah hmm. jason dabs k and those guys i gotta actually i need to call dabs 
Uh, we have not even taken a break. All right, all. yeah, let's let's take a break. <laughs> we're we're so fucking amped up from from this show. The adrenaline is still going. By the way, I came home that night. I was supposed to. Be, Andrea still had to show up for another show. Yeah. She had, so we we recorded. Well, we recorded the two p.m. show. And mm-hmm. then I made it back here probably about 6.30, I'm going to guess, maybe 7 o'clock because I went out with Andrea and had some uh, food afterwards. Mm-hmm. She had to sing again at 7.30, and then that show ended at like 9.15. Well, they had an after party up at Time Out Sports Bar to announce the, the, the next show, the Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah. Well, I was supposed to go up there and meet her. And uh, I came home. I, I laid down on the couch, and I had I, – I don't get nervous, Tack. I, I just <laughs> – I don't. But in this situation, in preparation for the show, my nerves were so fucking shot. My anxiety was through the roof. Mm-hmm. I wanted everything to go perfect because I wanted to both represent the playhouse and represent the band as well as represent us yeah. well. So I got back here. After all that, just my adrenaline dumped. I laid down on the couch with the dog. I didn't wake up. I slept through nine phone calls. I didn't wake up till 9.30 when I was supposed to have been up there for half an hour. Like, oh, fuck. Oh, shit, it's happening again. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sucked. Yeah, Jimmy kept telling me, too, up up to that point, finally shooting. He was like, I'm so nervous about this. I'm so nervous. I just want to do a good job, and I'm just so nervous. And I was like, dude, it's going to be good, man. Don't worry. Yeah, I once think, the first songs hit, I, my nerves were gone. I was fine. At that point, it was just adrenaline and go get it done. There was no nerves at that point. Yeah, we did hit a couple of uh, technical difficulties, but overall, everything was good. Yeah. So. Solid. And that's expected. Murphy's Law. So. <sighs> well, cool. All right, let's take a break in studio. Indeed. Um, I need another gonna, beer anyways. Yeah, another beer, another vape, another another fun couple of things there's no di- no diary no diary tonight because unless andrea happens to come downstairs because she is um not feeling so well so we'll be back in just a little bit listen to a little bit of dj go lugo and i want my favorite dj to give everybody the word who's on the turntables tonight my son are you guys gonna like kick it old school yeah 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 kick it kick it Let's take it old school. Back in the day. It's the old school remix. <laughs> DJ Gil Lugo. Live in the mix. <laughs> Village Idiot Pub. You locals know about it. You guys from out of town have to check them out. Village Idiot Pub is now a proud sponsor with Living Podcariously and the Twisted Ten Podcasts. It's more than just about commercials, though. The cast here will be taking our show on the road to Village Idiot to record some episodes as well as hold events. They have over 30 beers on tap, including ciders and Hefeweizen, my favorite, as well as hundreds of bottle choices. Adam, you forgot my favorite, all the delicious wine. (laughs) So get your friends together and enjoy the board games, puzzles, and the giant Jenga. Let the owner Jason, as well as the rest of the staff there, take excellent care of your beer drinking needs. Mention either one of our shows to the staff and get 10% off your tab. Tuesday is open mic, Wednesday is trivia, Thursday is karaoke, Friday and Saturday night are live music. Visit them at 4 Harrison Street, Suite 103, Cocoa, Florida, or Village Idiot Pub on Facebook. And don't forget, they are a dog-friendly location, so bring your friends, family, and fur babies. Hey, Tech, do you ever have that conversation with your girl about where to eat dinner and it always turns into that back and forth? I don't know. You pick. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while, yeah. Yeah? Well, I've got an answer for you next time that comes up. Oh, yeah? Where at? The Salty Fox in Melbourne off of Old Galley Boulevard. Oh, nice. You know, I've actually been there and the food was pretty awesome. Hell yeah, it was. They offer a great selection of paninis, shareable appetizers, soups and salads, and one of the best desserts I've ever had, the Funky Monkey. Oh, yeah. My favorite was the vintage options. They got this meal called Ramen Noodle on Crack. You just got to try it out. Done. That's definitely what I'm getting next time. Put the fun between your legs at the Salty Fox every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. with the Old Galley Arts District Bike Crawl. 
It's a four-mile bicycle ride down Pineapple Avenue with stops for food and beer all along the route. Be sure to visit the Salty Fox every Sunday for brunch from 11 to 4. Hey, isn't that the $10 bottomless mimosas brunch? Sure is. Enjoy your brunch while the Salty Fox's DJ spins throwbacks and top 40 hits. Salty Fox is located in the downtown O'Galley Art District on O'Galley Boulevard. Check them out on Facebook at facebook.com slash saltyfoxmelbourne or online at thesaltyfox.net. Hey listeners, be sure to mention you heard about the Salty Fox on our show and you'll get 10% off your meals. Turn the bass up. I rock beast. And welcome back to the Libyan Pod, Gary. Seriously. Yeah, did you like that? Huh? Did you, did you like this again? Like, did you, uh, was, it, you, was it why you follow saying everything I say? I say? <laughs> <What the fuck? laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> welcome back to the Libyan Pod, Gary. See <laughs> y'all. Uh, so yeah, we did, we did our, our first segment is all hot pink and the, the music of queen performance. God, hey, forgive us if we're over like over energized about that, but that was such a fun fucking shoot yeah, for us and a fun event for us. Geeked out uh, pretty hard over yeah, it. Yeah, it was. Yeah, they don't want to hear about it anymore. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we, you know, we talked about this last week a little bit. We were trying to fit it into a segment last week. We kind of ran out of time. Um, I've started doing something kind of because of Josh. Uh, Josh had brought this up to me. Mr. Wilson had brought this up. Um, I don't have really the, the horsepower behind my computer systems here at the house to really profit off of this too much. But I wanted to dip into this cryptocurrency pool and and gold rush, so to speak. Yeah. So uh, I'm farming, buddy, like, or I'm mining. Like Bitcoin? Is that what we're this talking is, about? This is like Bitcoin. Yeah, it's exactly think, like Bitcoin, yes. I think it's so, about time we talk about it on the show. Crypto. Well, you said, you said it's like Bitcoin or it's a lot like Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. So it's not Bitcoin. What I farm is uh, digital note. That's that's another type of cryptocurrency. There's hundreds of them out there, aren't there, Josh? Let me let me stop you real quick. Yeah. Um, there's actually several thousand. But oh wow, let me stop you here. This is important to say. None of us, from a legal legal perspective, have any idea what the fuck we're talking about. Good cover for liability. I None like of it. this is financial advice. None of this is all guessing. You can call it <laughs> speculating because it sounds cool, but it's a fucking educated so, guess. Like when you said there's thousands of different kinds of mm-hmm. cryptocurrency. So I feel like anybody can just make their own currency. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what? I, yes. I just did just now. I just made... Tack note? Tack note. What is that? Tack coin? What's it exchanging at? I got a penny. Give me a thousand of them. Uh, you can have a million for a penny. Uh, you guys damn. hear that? I'm go, buy, go buy tack note on Binance. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> We are good representation from three different perspectives on this. Tack is a novice. No novice? Bit, I don't know anything. No cryptocurrency knowledge at all. I know a little bit. I know enough to know what it is, how to use it, and how I can get some of my own. And then Josh is more advanced than either one of us. I wouldn't say he's a guru in cryptocurrency yet, but he's he knows a lot to be able to talk to us and maybe some of our listeners about it a little bit. So yeah, I'd say a little cryptocurrency stuff. This is the perfect conversation to have. Unfortunately, when Andrea is sick, because she can't stand this kind of oh, talk. So we brought it up during a break in our last recording session, and she was just like, "Shut the fuck up!" <laughs> She's like, "You nerds." <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how much I'm going to enjoy this conversation. So let's uh, well, let's let's find just, out. Let me, let me make it. Let me make this very clear. If yeah. you had spent a hundred dollars, just a hundred dollars, yeah, when Bitcoin's initial public offering of their currency came out, you would have in your pocket right now. A hundred, what is it at? 15,000 a share? If you put a hundred dollars at the Bitcoin ICO, you'd be the richest man on the planet. You, you have a hundred. Yes, but with like a fake currency or. 150, no, you can transfer currency that into I can't real hold. currency. You'd have $150 million right now. If it was a penny a share or whatever, you'd have $150 million in your pocket. But so how would I so, have $150 so million? Dollars? I actually, I heard, I read a really good analogy for this one, which I really, really like. So I could say that a single Bitcoin is worth. I'm not sure what it's at right now, but let's just say $15,000. Actually, let's ask Google. Hey, Google, what's Bitcoin's current value? One BTC is approximately 13040 United States dollars. Okay, Thank you, Google. so $13,000. Don't think the robot is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but she likes it. Hey, Google, do you like to be thanked? I'm thankful for animal facts. For example, a turkey's gobble can be heard over a mile away. 
Okay. Thanks, Google. All right. A turkey's gobble can be heard for <laughs> over a mile away. Let me just, I can write that one down. <laughs> so I heard a really, or read a really good analogy. Um, okay. Because I'm not going to go and like, for perspective, Bitcoin has kind of hit a point where it's not like uh, transactionally uh, useful. You know, a cup of coffee is five bucks. That's like point zero 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 one Bitcoin or whatever it breaks down to, right? Mm -hmm. So it's more fair to think of Bitcoin at this point <clears throat> as almost a store of value. Basically, if I'm a super duper rich celebrity and I go buy a ten million dollar painting, it's not because I give ten million shits about art. It's because I need a ten million dollar store of value that I can like liquidate and like move out of like not money, not in the bank, just something that will hang out and retain some relative store of value. Okay. So I can say for, I, I don't know, I'm just going to write out this painting analogy. You know, I know that that $10 million painting is going to be at least as much, if not more with the natural inflation of the U S dollar. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the easiest way to think about Bitcoin specifically. However, to make that a bigger picture, Bitcoin is one amongst a very, very large sea of offerings for what cryptocurrency can do. Bitcoin in itself, uh, it was uh, originally released anonymously. Nobody knows who created it. Nobody knows, like, there's no owner. Mm -hmm. So the guy, uh, I, the person, the group, the person, the entity that released this white paper anonymously on a forum in 2000 and, I think it's 2009, 2008, something like that. But basically dumped a white paper saying, here is how you can make a completely decentralized, publicly verified currency. And his goal, their goal, was to, their goal was to replace uh, a, a traditional fiat currency, replace the US dollar, replace the euro, replace the British pound. Um, Maybe not replace. Replace isn't the right word. To create a global currency that is decentralized or not regulated by banks. So it's regulated by consensus and has like a really cool way of like verification and the transaction ledger for it is public and anybody can go and download every Bitcoin transaction that's ever happened. You can go, you can download all of them all the way back to the original first test transactions before we saw it as a population just in their lab. Um, all of it's maintained, all of it's verified. It's at a high level, it's really neat. Uh, so basically, if I'm sending Adam one Bitcoin, let's just say we're having, a, right. we're this, having a baller I transaction. Just got 15 grand right there, buddy. That's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. So basically, I will say, uh, let me suck your dick. I'll do it. Yeah. I mean, for 13 grand, I guess. But done. I, if that's what it's going to cost. <laughs> uh, so, so this transaction that happens, basically, the, the, the transaction record is sent out to the network um, using something very similar to BitTorrents. Uh, for those who are listening who might be familiar with that, basically it broadcasts out to everybody on the Bitcoin network that's listening on that specific address and port number. They say, yes, there's an update. And they take that information in and they, using an encryption algorithm, will determine using the hash from a previous block and the new block basically it's whatever basically it's blasted out boring. yeah it gets super no, boring kidding. it's I'm gonna sorry. go into the like the really <laughs> I'm getting, boring i'm even very sleepy here. <laughs> so basically um i i will take you know there's thousands of computers out there verifying bitcoin transactions right so if i'm sending one to adam that transaction is blasted out to the network and then based on who's running that exchange will take how many confirmations and it'll go out and a certain amount of uh, validation nodes will respond back saying, yes, this is an accurate transaction. He has it to send. He has a wallet to receive. Go. It's like saying every time you receive a check from somebody, like let's say your employer writes you a check mm -hmm. before you can cash that check, which is now instantaneously for Bitcoin. It's verified by <laughs> a million other people. They see your check. It's coming in. You can now cash it because it is said by these million other people, yes, TAC, that company that's writing you the check, they're good. They got it. That's a good check. It's now yours. That's basically what that is. So just in case we do have any crypto fans that are listening, Bitcoin is no longer free, nor is it no longer instant. Oh. That, that is a whole, it's a whole big thing in the crypto community gotcha. that Bitcoin is like showing its age really hard. Me medium level of knowledge over here, TAC. Listen to Josh. <laughs> I'm completely lost. That's okay. So basically the idea was 
Um, if you and I and, and Adam, the three of us, we can come to a consensus that one made up like like this this dog hair that I just pulled off from Oliver off my jacket. Like I can say that this hair is the equivalent to one U.S. dollar, and you and I agree upon that. And I give Adam this one dog hair. You can now Sweet. agree that he is one dog hair up or one dollar richer. And if we've all agreed upon this and then you have, I don't know, four quarters in your pocket and he's like, I could really use some change for a soda. And be like, cool. Well, we both say that this dog hair is worth a dollar now. So I mm-hmm. will give you four quarters. It has value because we say it has value. Same thing as right. the same thing as the note. There's no longer a yeah. real backing of gold for the U.S. dollar. It's a backing of what the people of the United States say and the world say the dollar is valued at. Yes, they actually they do something uh, kind of interesting, which is scarcity scarcity valuation. So the U.S. dollar only has a certain amount of currency in circulation. Money goes into the Federal Reserve and gets shredded all the time, and money comes out of the Federal Reserve all the time. Mm -hmm. But basically by controlling how much they shred and how much they re-release versus how much they print new into circulation. Yeah. So they can say, oh, the dollar is inflating faster than we wanted to because we're the Federal Reserve and we make that choice. They say, oh, it's going up too fast. So they just put more money out. So, okay, slow down that that inflation a little bit. Um, So our money is actually like heavily regulated based on how much is in circulation. Now, of course, I'm dramatically simplifying one of the most complex decision making sure. processes in the world. However, that's at its root, like that's really all it is. So the value of the Bitcoin or the value mm-hmm. of any of the cryptocurrency is just what the world puts in the value of the individual coins or the individual currencies themselves. They're secure, they're transferred to you or your computer or your digital wallet securely, just like a bank account would transfer money back and forth. And then once you have that, you can exchange it. Uh, most of them you can exchange for currency using one of the online systems. So if you had one Bitcoin sitting in you know, your digital wallet that somebody had gifted you, you could then turn that around through a mechanism, through a tool, and turn that into actual U.S. dollar that is av- available in your account. So you could go and withdraw 15 grand or whatever the hell it's worth at the time. Okay. Makes sense? Now, so, the cool part is not the coin necessarily or the individual's. The cool part is that you don't necessarily have to buy into it with actual money. You can buy into it with other types of things like a mining rig. Like I'm kind of using my laptop over here to mine that digital note. You can have your computer perform these mining tasks or high-end complex math computations or equations or whatever. Or you can join a pool or something like that. And you can just earn it as your computer does its thinking and its processing to decrypt these computations or equations or whatever yeah it's an it's an interesting um it's an interesting mechanism but it's probably one of the most important mechanisms for a cryptocurrency to succeed Uh, i mentioned that it goes out we use bitcoin as an example during a bitcoin transaction that transaction hash is sent out to the network and it's it's verified by their computers right that um that is what mining really is so there's a transaction fee that every network has, uh, when I say every network, um, every type of coin. So maybe we talk about Bitcoin. We're only really using that because it's the most popular name, but there's, as I mentioned, thousands of others. Um, yeah, you got into Ripple, and yeah, then now I, you're d- looking into Ethereum. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about mining, um, and I'm also gonna talk about Ripple because of nice. how it ended up leading me to mining ether so it's it's a cool two coin story there so before we get deep into it why don't you ask some general questions that you might have about (laughs) cryptocurrency in general because i probably won't be able to answer it but i know josh will um jesus oh god i have one well you mentioned what's a real word real world use for it other than saying i have this many fake and magic internet monies right (laughs) so (laughs) I'm gonna. I'll focus on one you mentioned, Ripple. Um, I'm gonna talk about the what Ripple is doing with it. So, Ripple Labs is the name of a company. They're an American company, and Ripple Coin is the name of a cryptocurrency. Now, it's very important for this conversation to remember that those are separate things. They are not dependent upon each other to survive. Ripple Coin can exist in its own cryptocurrency world and be successful. Ripple Labs is a business, and it is also going to be successful. 
whether or not Ripple Coin succeeds. Now, that being said, Ripple Labs is heavily invested in Ripple Coin because they created it. But what they're doing with it, there's a banking system that's called SWIFT. It's SWIFT or SWELL. I, I've always gotten them mixed up. Basically, what they're using now is called SWIFT. And it's the it's how, like, if a bank in America wants to send a million dollars to a bank in Germany, the generally uh, agreed upon mechanism to do that is called SWIFT. And it's between banks, and it takes days Normal trust transaction, make sure the money gets there, they receive it, they send it back saying, or they send a note back saying, yes, we got it, transaction completes uh, on both ledgers. So it's And an completely inha- governed. And of well. course, and, and that's yes. not 100% a bad thing. Not uh, 100%, talking, talking but about a, governance and a stuff, little but. bit. I mean, there's there, there are reasons why you don't might not necessarily want your money to be monitored as it's moving to your relatives in another country. They don't, you know... That's true. I mean, I launder money through my foreign relatives all the time, <laughs> so I hate when people catch on to that. Right? So, but basically, um, so the real-world application here is that uh, Ripple Labs, using a new protocol that they've put together, it's called Swift or Swell, the opposite of what's in use now. They... Uh, have two means to do it, one of which is called X Rapid. Basically, it's a transaction that occurs using Ripple Coin or XRP as a transaction medium. So then both banks have Ripple holdings, Ripple Coin holdings, and they run the transaction over the Ripple network, which is relatively instantaneous. And I say relative because it's a measure of how many seconds it takes versus how many days it takes. Um, and the cost for it, mm. uh, a real world application, money was sent over the Ripple network millions of dollars, and the transaction cost was 0.04% of a penny. Wow. So it cost to send millions of dollars 0.004 pennies. Nice. Or 0.00004 dollars, which is just, it's unprecedented. So, like, that's a real world example of how coins can be used to, to better our lives. And that's, of course, through banks still. But <laughs> you can literally take, if you have a Bitcoin or if you have a bunch of this other Ether, Ethereum or any of these other currencies, if you have that much already stocked up in your wallet, uh, you, you can literally go do business with that now. There are places that are recognizing those types of things to purchase. So, if you wanted to go buy a car, if you showed up at a car dealership tomorrow and said, I've got one Bitcoin. Can I buy this car? They will absolutely, well, most of them will absolutely take you up on that because they understand their value is inside that coin. They would end up cashing it, I'm sure. But I would I would actually have to completely disagree with you as much as I hate to say that. Really? Yep. That is actually me as an active investor in the cryptocurrency community, as someone who's actively mining, someone who is actively buying equipment to mine better, I still... I'm incredibly disappointed by the lack of practical use on a day-to-day basis for me. Hmm. I still believe in it. I still think the the technology behind it, blockchains, I still think it is. So you would just have to take it through one of the money exchanges first before going to them and just take them cash? Yep. Hmm. Interesting. So, like, uh, you, you brought up crypto mining. Um, so I'm going to touch on that, and that's that validation mechanism that uh, I was, I was kind of going into with Bitcoin. So when that blasts out to the network, whoever validates that transaction they actually get the the transaction fee between the two parties sending the money. So that's what mining actually is. It's running a validation. So it's the exchange of electrical power, electrical and computational power for that transaction fee. So it puts a, relatively speaking, it puts a tangible measurement behind the input to the network. So the you can measure the wattage and you can measure the hashing rate of your computer and you can measure like I spent this much money and I put it into the network, and coins came out. So there's there's an exchange there. And that's what gives Bitcoin kind of some value. So, but be Holy careful, Jack. I know. But be careful. There was a guy. I don't know if you saw this. I'm sure Josh saw this. Man, there was a guy that was busted. I think he was Snopes in Tampa. Was fake. Well, oh no, it was. I'm sorry. Tell your story first. God, I could be that wrong. Was such a great I story. could be wrong. Let me before I cut your knees out. Which story? There, I think there's a guy in Tampa. I think it was Tampa. It might it might not have been Florida, but in Texas. But there's a story of a guy who was selling Bitcoin to elderly people, uh, and all that he was actually selling them was Chuck E. Cheese coins. Gotcha. Like the actual Chuck E. Cheese coin, and he got busted. Is that the fake one? That is the fake God one. God damn it. Yeah, that was a fake story. Because I bought it. again. I bought it, too. I was like, that could totally happen. Oh, yeah, easily. I believe that that happened. Yeah. But, you know, it's one of those. I Damn it, Snopes. 
What the yeah. hell? So I, I don't think we're. Rumor. I don't think we're convincing Tack to want to buy into cryptocurrency. No, I'm really having a hard time to keep up with the conversation. It's making me more sleepy. Not, I can tell. No like you, you look guys. exhausted. What I'm, time did you well, get up this morning? Four thirty. Cool. Jesus, I almost Christ. went to bed at four thirty. What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, you know, I have this job thing where I make actual money, we all. not like <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yes. Oh. I don't know. None of this pixelated bullshit. It, no. it, look, the pixelated bullshit has made two people billionaires. I gotcha. The Winkle I, Boss I brothers. I don't. I believe Winkle in Boss, it. Yeah. So I mean, it just seems like it's going to be one of those things. Like, couldn't somebody just easily forge it, or couldn't somebody? So actually, no. Easily, I'm going to touch on that. Couldn't somebody just say, you know what, Bitcoin's not worth anything, and then somebody go, you know what, you're right, it's not sure. worth anything. It's volatile. So is the U.S. dollar, though. It's volatile. Yes. absolutely. And then everybody just goes, it's fucking bullshit. So is like, the stock market, though, I'll, Tack. It's I the will, same thing. Uh, I'm going to. So that's something tangible you can hold. So is so yeah. is cryptocurrency. Talking about how you can hold a stock certificate. Yeah, but that What's doesn't. That? I don't know. So like you can physically hold a stock certificate. You do technically own a stock certificate. No, no, I got stocks. you there. Um, but yeah, I mean that's nothing to stop that company from completely going under. I mean, oh, the owner of this company that I just bought ten shares in came out as wildly aggressively racist. Guess they're going to go out of business now. My shares are worth shit. Yeah, public so, influence can influence any dollar amount and on any currency level so uh, no matter where you invest your money it can always be influenced by popular opinion by politics by anything there's lots of ways to influence it this is just another outlet for that so the so you're right in that theoretically speaking um somebody and i'm kind of air quoting here in studio somebody could pull the rug out from underneath bitcoin the problem is is nobody wants it to be worth less money like people are heavily invested. Right. There are, I want to say somewhere around three hundred billion dollars wrapped up in Bitcoin. It's God like, damn! I it, didn't know it was that much. Yeah, it's an Oof. insane amount of money. They're hosting billions of dollars in transactions a day, a day, billions of dollars. But so you're you're right. Technically, somebody could come up and say like it's not worth anything. But to kind of use an analogy for another. <clears throat> for another cryptocurrency that's uh, less popular, it's called Litecoin. And it has some technological differences, but basically it's considered to be a lighter weight Bitcoin. That's their goal. All that aside, the owner, the guy who created the coin and built the network up, uh, I want to say it was about two weeks ago, from like this is the night they were recording, he sold out all of his Litecoin. It hit, its all, it hit an all-time high. He sold all of it. And then he came out and he said, I did it because anytime that he would post something about it, it could impact, it could dramatically impact the value of the coin. He could be like, oh man, took a bad shit today. I don't think Litecoin's going to do so well. And Litecoin would go down. Damn. And he was, and he didn't like that. It defeats the purpose of a decentralized currency. It's not supposed to have like one governing body, one person that can influence it and make changes. So he sold all of his holdings, and the coin value definitely went down. It reflected uh, very directly in that same day, but it hasn't bottomed out. It went, I, I want to say it dropped like 30% that day or something, which is fairly comparable to, you know, if uh, an executive in a company sells their holdings, their shareholdings, it means they're leaving the company generally. But Tech, you see, you've seen opportunities in the past to, to possibly get in on something at a ground level. And 99% of the time, they always fall flat, right? Right. Penny well, stocks. Sure. Penny stocks. This is a very good comparison to something like a penny stock. Cryptocurrency isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It will definitely be around unless something much, much larger happens to the world economies. So cryptocurrency mm-hmm. is definitely a thing that's going to happen and going to be here. And some of these stocks, or I say stocks, they're not stocks. Some of these coins or some of these currencies are valued pennies on the dollar. So you could literally take ten, fifteen, twenty dollars even, and get an entire bushel of these fucking coins, or these cryptocurrency notes or hashes or whatever, and then turn it around in a year and possibly have you know a nest egg that that sits there. If not, you just spend twenty, fifty bucks, whatever you spend on it. It's not too bad. Right. So yes, it's very, very high risk, but possibly very high reward in the outcome. I get it. So it's cool. It's kind of like the stock market, just not. 
So you you had talked about how you know it could be hacked because it is this ethereal thing that just kind of exists out right. there. Right. Well, technically, <clears throat> technically speaking, yes, it could be hacked. However, this is what's called the fifty-one percent attack, and it's like a known, documented thing that when the first it was like in the original Bitcoin white paper, the guy or the group that put it out there said this will happen. Basically, what fifty-one percent means is that you have to have a computer. A single computer so powerful that it can overpower 51% of the network validations to become a majority validator on the network. So, for I, I don't know how. Oh, I don't know. Maybe IBM's new quantum computer that they've been talking about? Not enough. Damn, really? We're talking. So, um, when we talk about hashes, okay, we're talking about a computer's ability to run a mathematical computation. Sure. A CPU, like the regular processor in your computer, that is measured in hashes a second. It's kind of the standard. And then we start talking from there. It goes up to uh, giga hashes, okay, and then tera hashes, and then penta hashes. And I don't even know what's above that. I forget. That's where Bitcoin's at. Hmm. You have to have the processing power that's above penta hashing or... 200 million times more powerful than your average house. What if you've computer. just smoked reefer in a penthouse? Is that penta hashing? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Go take over Bitcoin. Come on, Tag. Come on, Tag. Give me a smile out of that. We've I, feel, lost I feel like it's what I just lost did, him. man. Tag's like, I <laughs> wish fucking my, lost my, my, my head literally hurts right now. <laughs> man, when we told you we were going to bring this oh. up, you told us you were going to be disappointed. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was, I was like, like oh. I feel like I'm going to be lost during this and not enjoy well, the right. conversation. Well, then let's do this. Let's, let's do this. Uh, this is not tax bag. This is medium case my bag. This is definitely your bag. It's definitely. Um, why don't you? I don't add, hate the topic. You know, don't get me wrong. Why don't you add, Josh? Why don't you add some sort of closing comments on it? There's no question that this is something that is definitely in your wheelhouse, but it's completely lost tax. So add something for our listeners because we've got listeners out there that are definitely interested in this. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I don't think that if I can't keep him engaged with <laughs> jokes about uh right. ch- you know bitcoin coins being sold that are Chuck E. cheese coins or talking about smoking weed in a penthouse we've lost we've lost listeners because tack <laughs> is a good representation of our listeners too you're right that's that's fair so how about this one i'm gonna just a two sentence thing i invested about a thousand dollars into ripple coin that we were talking about earlier and it inf- okay. and it inflated and it ended up hitting uh, a relative market value of about $3,500 on that investment, which went really well. Nice. To which I dumped out all of my profit, and I bought a computer to mine, to run, to join a validation network to mine, and pretty, I mean, essentially give me free money, if you will. Like, I've already done the math, and like my, I, like, I have profit margins and stuff. So, like, basically, I used my profit, I reinvested to make something else that's going to make me more profit all in the crypto world. And you don't do anything to it. You set it aside, you pay mm-hmm. the power bill for the processing, which is going to be expensive, but the profits that you get on the other end of that are going to outpay that power bill, usually, as long as you do it right, as long as you farm the right thing or mine the right thing. It's cool, man. Yeah. It's, it's so there. I there. guess, you know, you're right, though. I don't I don't want to harp on too far, because like you said, if tax board, somebody out there is bored, yeah, Exactly. So I want to do yeah. that to you guys. I'm sorry. I, I really but don't want you to No, no, no. Good, no you're not. good. No, it's fair, because, <laughs> I mean, it, no. I'm really interested, and I could talk about this for a long then time. Then have at it. Just, <laughs> how about you just don't talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, then, well, so if I'll we're just losing, sit here and listen. <laughs> if we're losing tax, that's a, that's a good representation. Well, each of one of us comes from a different res- uh, perspective in life, and if we're losing tack we're going to be losing some other listeners out there so i'll tell you what though if you if you're listening uh if you're in the crypto world hit us up on facebook hit me up on facebook hell yeah i I want to talk about it i want to talk about me too i want to know okay i mean yeah message us tag us (laughs) um me me and or adam um like i i want to talk to you about what you're doing are you mining i want to hear about it what are you holding i want to talk about your holdings why are you holding certain coins why are you invested i want to talk to you about your cryptocurrency experience because I'm geeking out over it. You understand that one of our listeners is going to give Tack a Bitcoin and say, here, just, just, here's one coin. Go have fun. And Tack's going to be like, what the fuck is this shit? Fuck this. I'm going to get a burger. And then, one then, of I, hit, our then listeners, I hit delete or whatever it is you do. <laughs> all right, I have all kinds of... If one of our listeners gives Tack a Bitcoin and not me, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> yeah, whatever and then it's going to happen now. And then if Tack Don't deletes that one. Bitcoin, I'm going to firebomb his car. Because <laughs> that's... Oh, that would hurt. It would hurt me oh. inside. Oh, that's but, hilarious. Well, losing money would hurt me too. I get it. 
<laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take another break in studio. Uh, again, hit us up. Um, hit us up if you're interested in talking more about Bitcoin. We might actually start a thread on uh, on Facebook. By the way, we're going to be starting a Facebook group for our podcast. That's something that is going to be happening. We don't know the name of it yet, but we'll uh, we'll add something in there. So there'll be a thread on on that group as soon as we get it up for uh, for cryptocurrency in general, just general just yeah. discussions. I'll tell you what, though, like you said, we don't have a name for it yet. So if you got a name, you got to catch a Hell name yeah. for a bunch of people who like to sit around, drink beer, and talk shit. Hit us up. Hit us up. All right, guys, we'll be right back after this. DJ Kildugo. Hey, it's Adam. If you enjoyed the content or the cast of Living Podcariously, be sure to check out the other show we produce. It's called The Twisted Ten. Each week, a host or a guest host takes over the show and brings their own unique and original top ten list to the show. Here's a few examples. Top ten crazy religious practices. Top ten sexual fetishes. Twisted Guinness World Records. Top ten possible human extinction events. And my personal favorite, top ten best or worst infomercial products. As you can see the content is all over the place for the show however it is a lot of fun to produce and we hope you like it as always thanks for listening Sponsorship with Living Podcariously or The Twisted Ten is not just about contracts or money. We like to form relationships with those who invest in our shows. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. We only like representing companies or products that we can really get behind. We met Kyle and Bianca from Oak and Iron Photography at an event from another sponsor of ours and immediately bonded with them because, let's face it, they're just awesome people. Yeah. And if you came out to our Living Podcariously listener event, you may have seen them roaming around, taking some photos for us. They captured so much joy and emotion in those photos that night. It was amazing. Yes, it was. Now, Adam, like I'm kind of a amateur photographer, so I can appreciate how difficult it really is to capture moments like that. They shoot events of any kind, weddings, lifestyle photos, like maternity, couples, families, you name it. Not only do they capture moments that your grandmama will like, but they also put that oak and iron personal style and spin on what would normally be considered traditional photos. Oh, yeah, that ring of fire shot from our event was awesome. Hell, yeah. Their photos not only capture the raw emotion, but when looking at them later, you're transported back to that day they were taken. You'll see it on their website. They capture, quote, the real moments for the true at heart. Nice. Head on over to oakandironphoto.com to check out some of their work. Also, you can click the contact us button and get a quote of your own. Go and check out oakandironphoto.com and let Kyle and Bianca know you heard about them from us. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Oh, Mr. Get Carter. Into Get into it, buddy. What? Huh? Uh, trying to somehow pull your energy back up from your lackluster interest in cryptocurrency. I know. I was so lost. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dude, that's all right. I apologize for that. That's okay. You're good. Sorry. Dude. It's not your not your thing. It's that's Not that, that I'm not interested. It just was very dry information. It is. And, it is. and I, you know, I said this during the break, too. Like, the hardest thing about cryptocurrency right now is talking about it to <laughs> non-enthusiasts. Seriously, that's like... Yeah. You, as someone who's not interested, were literally falling asleep while I was trying I was to literally like, falling asleep. give you an education on it. You're just, like, <laughs> no. just like, stop looking at me so I can close my eyes. <laughs> it's kind of like going to an insurance seminar. You know, you need insurance, but you don't want to hear about it. <laughs> That's fair. So I got some cool news. Andrea and I are going up for our very first doctor's official doctor's appointment for the baby. So we uh, we go cool, cool. into, I don't know, whatever tests they're going to do for the first tests at like... 10 weeks into blood pregnancy. Test? I would imagine and blood test. I don't know what they're going to do for her. I actually, uh, having just gone through this, it's going to be a super uninvolved visit for you, Adam. It's what she told me. Yeah, she Actually, really, they one, all are. But. She said this one is probably not one that I would want to be there at. Um, I mean, I, I still, still want to be I think you would there. want to be at this yeah. one. I mean, it's it's going to be... if it, So if it's anything like Margaret's, our first was... Um, 
you know that that weird microphone magic wand that also produces pictures like, sure the the ultrasound like, yeah like but it's like the weird microphone dildo like yeah. it's the only way to describe <laughs> yeah, this thing absolutely but um warm petroleum jelly on the belly and then yeah no this was you know no, this, this is the was, insertion. This is an one. internal. Oh, yeah. oh, this is an oh. internal ultrasound. It looks oh, like yeah. a big old dildo. It really does. Like, did um, they put like a condom on and they put on the jelly on and really? Some and then see. Music. Okay, well, I went through this one Wait time. A minute. Andrea's doctor's a girl. Maybe I do want to go for it. this. See, I went through wrong? this. Is that wrong? Sorry, one time, um, you know, when my ex was pregnant with her son. Sure. And uh, you know, we went to this doctor and. Uh, this is the same doctor that had delivered like her twin girls to, you know, several years before. So this is kind of a handsome dude, you know. And then so like when you go into the you know, go into the appointment, you're in there and then you know, I s and then, you know, he's getting ready to he's got your girl up on the thing with her <laughs> you know, he's got the thing out. I don't know why he kept staring at me as he was lubing it up. <laughs> and then like and just before he stuck it inside of her, he looked at me like like, what's up? You know, like we got something in common, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or like as he's like sticking it in. That's called. He's uh, like, is that comfortable? And she'd be like, it's fine. And then he would look at me like, what's up? What you do know? we call those snow And he's snow basically buddies? over there so, uh, fingering my girl in front of me as I'm sitting there watching it. And <laughs> yeah. we're paying him. Yeah. Well, actually, I wasn't, but, you know. Snow buddies? No, Eskimo brothers. Eskimo brothers. Eskimo. He's an Eskimo brother. <laughs> yeah. It's a very exclusive. Afterwards, club. I was like, I was like, why did he keep like looking at me the whole time? And she was like, Shut up! He was not. I was like, No, he wasn't. But it, <laughs> it was still funny. Oh yeah, I can't wait. So yeah. I, I want to know the sex. I want to know as soon as possible. I want to know which over here know. in Brevard is like twenty four weeks. By the way, oh it was really? Like eight weeks farther back than Tampa. I don't understand what the difference is. Further back in which direction? Wait a minute. Like, like longer late in the pregnancy. Yeah. So in Tampa, we were told we could find out at sixteen weeks. Huh. And then when blood we came, tests will tell you all that at this stage, won't they? At 10, 10 to twelve weeks, they'll be able to tell you all that. Nope. Well, I guess mm. if you do blood tests of the Excuse fetus, me. but you know, blood tests are for Andrea, right? I have no idea any yeah. of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Though. So, okay, cool. I think you're talking about two well, different I mean, things. I, I know the sex of Andrea. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about the sex of the baby. What are you talking about? That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. So the the blood work is going to be. Uh, Andrea now, and then when they do the genetic testing, it will also be Andrea. And if they find anything in her that is a positive indicator that some of your genetic code could contribute to a genetic disorder, that's how they'll identify it. They'll find the triggers in her genetic code, and then they'll find the opposite trigger in your genetic code if they need to. Interesting. Yeah, it's pretty, it's like really crazy, fascinating shit. Are we still talking about Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, no, I'm, so it's like really <laughs> present for me as well uh, with Margaret, of course, being pregnant, <laughs> and uh, so we go Wednesday to find out. The Our gender. babies are going to be That's in awesome. school at the same time they together. Are. They are. Are you That's sure about really that? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did the math did the on math. the dates of right. like when, like our baby will be. Like Josh's baby and Margaret's baby will be the older in that class. Our baby will be the younger in that class. So yes, for sure. Man, our listeners are like, whatever happened to titties, beer, and picking up women <laughs> right? at bars? Yeah, exactly. I know, right? So, okay, so I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, we covered our rock star segment in the first segment, the first forty minute segment of the show. How much fun we had shooting the rock stars this this past weekend? So we got some of that out with of the cameras. Way. I kept. I kept telling you I was going to find a way to segue beer. Yeah, so. This, and I couldn't. So uh, I saw on Facebook, and I just, I want to believe that there is a lot of truth behind this. But basically, um, the guy showing the video, he said, how you pour your beer can help determine how much you can drink into the evening. Hmm. And hmm. I thought that was really fascinating. And basically, he poured a beer, like restaurant style, where he's going to take the bottle, he's going to pour it really slow, it's going to have no head on it. Like it's no head. Like yeah. Real right. clean. And then he took a, I don't know, it looked like, a, I don't know, like a, a more, like a pestle from a mortar and pestle, basically like a stick. And he just shook the beer up and it foamed over. And he's like, this is what happens when you drink it. You're going to take this non, the, the CO2 is not broken from the beer and you drink right. it. And then you put a bunch of food down and you move around and stuff. Your stomach's going to fill up with CO2, which is not going to hurt us, but it is going to impact our ability to eat, to drink farther. Bloating. Yeah, you yeah, get yeah. the bloating from the beer. Absolutely. Yeah. So there is actually a method, uh, which, let me rephrase that. I knew there was a method. There was a, a reason behind the method, 
for pouring a beer where it gives a little bit of head. Yeah, the the the, the, the a lot of brewers uh, actually make their beer. Brewers, brewers, brewers. a lot of brewers, a lot of brewers. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, no. Uh, the, when you pour a beer, the best way to pour a beer from a bottle into any kind of drinking glass is straight down the center. You don't pour it to get no head. You pour it to get head because that's how the brewers. I guess that's a hard word for me to say. Make their beer to taste because when the CO two is released out of the beer, it creates an aroma that compensates for the flavors in the beer. So you're supposed to actually have a head that either spills over or comes very near the top or gets to the point where you can actually drink it. Mm. So the correct way to pour the beer is down the center. I knew that, but I didn't know it was for the reasons that you just said with regards to how it would fill your belly and how those gases would be released. I always knew it from the aroma and Was the Was that taste. the right answer? I think they compensate each other. or I mean, I think they're both, each they're other. both accurate. I don't know. It was just... I watched it like right before I came over, and I thought it was really cool. You know, we need to ask our friends over at Bug Nutty that question. Ding. Yeah, we need to go down and see them Ding. one night. Actually, Third Thursday is coming up here pretty soon, I believe, isn't it? Third Thursday of the month. Third Thursday, Ray Brito hosts uh, the the comedy nights there. We should go up there one night. He's there and ask John, our buddy that owns Bug Nutty, about that exact question about why what's the right way to pour a beer. Mm, that's going to depend it, on the type of beer. What the fuck is going yeah. on with Ray Breed? I haven't seen or talked to him in a while. Man, it's been some. He's been busy. He's probably fucking somebody else. Tag. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, that's no, a great that's way. Awesome. To, that's a great way to end the show right there. Nice. That's awesome, Josh. You guys ready to get out of here? Yeah, yeah, we can wrap yeah. it up. All right. Are you sure you don't want to talk about Bitcoin some more? <laughs> Let's I, do it. I can. <laughs> you trying not to go home? What's up? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Uh, Josh, just, uh, I'm just keep talking. I'm going to fade you, I'm just, I'm gonna fade I'm you going. to black. I'll, 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 All right. So <laughs> using the new computer that I got, so basically I'm going to hook it up so these graphics cards, they will completely... Is that good? Is that good? Uh, yeah, that's much better. Is that good? You like that? No, it's just kind of like he's in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's bring it back. I'm <laughs> just sorry, kidding. Josh. Oh. No. Oh. I'm right. sorry. Maybe it's just a bad night. We'll try again another night. Yeah. If Andrea's here, forget it. We ain't talking about Yeah. Corners. If Andrea's around, we can't. No. She, she won't. It's... She, no, we'd lose her quicker than shit. Uh, all right, guys, let's get out of here. Uh, thank you very much for listening this week. Um, uh, thank you for being patient with us during the holiday season and uh, during Adam's foobar of the data files. But, uh, hey, they, we should be back rocking and rolling here very soon. All those files are recovered, so we should rocking have all those. Rocking and rolling and whatnot. All those podcasts Was that up. on the set list? Was that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash livingpodcariously. You know what? You guys know how to find us. At this point, you've been listening to us this long. Search all the regular social media platforms for Living Podcariously. You will find us. We may have, and we'll update you guys next week, we may have a new email address to be able to use for the show. So uh, we've always had show at Living Podcariously. We're probably going to convert that over to a Dichotomy Media email address because that is our company that runs both of our shows. So uh, more on that uh, in next week's show. We'll, we'll turn over to Josh. Mr. Wilson, to give us an update on that next week. And don't forget to check us out on uh, iHeartRadio as well as Spotify now. Spotify. Have we're we, on Spotify. Have we checked it? Have yes. we seen? We're right, definitely on Spotify. I don't know about one of our two shows I know is. I know I found I, one of us on there. I don't know which one it was. You and I saw The Twisted Ten, which is our other show. Maybe that's the one that it was. I'm going to see if Living Podcast Last time I looked, coming. I think it was there. just like just episodes or something like that. Like you couldn't pull up the show. As oh, long as something's shit. on there. That was several weeks ago, though. What? So if you search for Living Podcariously, the first episode that comes up, episode zero. Well, well that's a good thing. That's our very first show. Yep. Well, see, there we go. We're on Spotify, guys. All right, high five. All right, high five. Mm. All right, guys. Thank you very much for listening to us this week. We greatly appreciate it. Miss Andrea Joy will be back next week with all of her lovely beauty to the show. Uh, we missed her this week. There's no question. Oh, they're all there. They're all there. Are there? Does that also include the cover art for each episode? It looks like the cover art was different. Yep, it's got the cover nice. art for each show too. That's awesome. We make so for listeners out there who may not know, we make special cover art for each and every episode that somehow marries up to the hosts or the guests or the topics or conversations or something. Yeah, you don't see it like on iTunes or anything like that. You see it on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube has it or Facebook. Yeah, um, but that's about it. Man, cool. the one. It's not. It's, not, it's not in order. Oh, so I'll have to ask him no. about order. But. That's weird. All right, guys. The bitch. Well, thanks for listening. On behalf of Living Podcariously, I'm Adam. I'm Tack. I'm Mr. Wilson. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch up with you guys next week. Later, y'all.
Hey, remember when we had that listener event? Yeah, yeah, our first ever listener event from Living Podcariously. Yeah, 777, yeah. seven, July 7. Giant success. In fact, we just gave Keith with the Children's Hunger Project his his uh, his money from that event that we raised. Indeed we did. Hey, what was that um, beer that was donated for the event? Uh, that was from Bug Nutty Brewery. That was called oh, yeah. The Nutty Idiot. It was a medium-bodied lager. I don't remember the ingredients that they had in it, but man, it was it was good. We served 300 pours, all 300 possible pours that we could have out of their donation. We served... <laughs> very very quickly that night yeah it had like an asian flavor to it or something it was like i don't know what it was it was interesting it was cool though i loved it i think a little bit of a sesame flavor yes I ha- i'm gonna have to get that ingredient list from him but yeah that was that was really really good um our boy ray burrito also does comedy up there every third thursday at bug nutty at bug nutty brewery here on Merritt island he does the uh the third thursday comedy night up there oh wow that's cool it's a, nice. it's a really cool list it's every time i've been up there it's amazing comics nice andrea did you try the beer that night Oh, yes. It was wonderful. <laughs> She's not a beer drinker, can you tell? <laughs> Don't say it like that. I wasn't standing at the game all night. I have plenty of time to drink beer. Yeah, John and the guys over at Bug Nutty certainly hooked us up. So we want to uh, send all of our listeners, if you're looking for a good micro brew, especially in Brevard County, uh, there's a lot of them out there, uh, and Bug Nutty is by far one of the best. They are located at 715 North Courtney Parkway, Merritt Island. Give them a call at 321-452-4460 or email them at manager at bugnutty.com. Josh almost learned a pretty valuable lesson that night, too. It wasn't just me with shaky Jake hands trying to hold that thing fucking steady. <laughs> yeah, what, uh, what the happened front of the stage isn't lit up and he's real easy to fucking fall off. <laughs> so there's that i almost fell on xavier yeah <laughs> uh, xavier and dan no less uh fortunately i was i was able to catch myself but yeah the i mean and you got you positioned yourself so when when josh would help me he would carry the long end of the boom out uh to help stabilize and i would carry the base and mm-hmm. it was all it was all connected it was all one unit then it would set it down and then from that point i'd basically take over camera was already rolling at that point i would just take over the operation and kind of swing it around where where we wanted the shots but uh, Josh's spot to squat uh, became a hot box. So he was sitting between two of these oh. giant lights <laughs> on the stage, which are these computer uh, animated lights that do all these. I cool was on the same side on the opposite side of the stage. I was in between these two things, too. Yeah. Those motherfuckers get hot. Yeah, I was like, and, okay, uh, I'm I, sitting there. That's where I should go. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I kicked one a couple times. I almost tripped over one one time. I was like, oh, fuck. I hope I don't knock these things over. I didn't know if you even could knock it over. I had no idea. But. I was like nervous around them. But. Stacy, uh, Stacy, the director of the Playhouse, Doctor Anastasia Hawkins Smith is her full name. Uh, she pulled me fancy. aside. She's fancy. She, uh, she pulled me. She's been the director of that Playhouse for twenty eight years, by the way. Mm-hmm. So uh, she pulled me aside um, that that evening and said that we were we handled ourselves very professionally, that we made our company look good, and she was very happy with our. You know, representation and etiquette and stage presence. She, she didn't think we got in the way. She didn't think we were, you know, uh, uh, taking away the vision from an audience to us. So it looked like we just, we blended in well. I'm sure our dichotomy media shirts helped a little bit with that, you know, <laughs> said crew on the back. And, yeah. Shirts were nice, buddy. Yeah. That I was wearing mine still too. That was a nice, I didn't wear mine tonight. <laughs> oh, actually, I have a, well, yeah, you got yours that night. I did. Okay, yeah. yeah, it was good. They fit good too. It's comfortable. It's I nice. was. They're good shirts. They're I'm scared to wash it, but um, the <laughs> guy said, out. "Yes." I'm sorry. That was... No, that's perfect. What? So, yeah, flip it inside out because it is vinyl um, press. So yeah. flip it inside out on cold. Don't ever put it on hot water, or that that logo and the, the writing and the words on the back will be gone. Ew. So yes, but yeah, uh, my know. boy. My, listen. So in a crunch, so yes, we've got our guys over at Allegro Printing who have hooked us up in the past with really good deals like on our mugs and shit like that in the past, but it not not their fault. Their minimum orders are more than we needed. We only needed enough for all of our PAs and our shooters for that day, so I didn't need you know 40 or whatever prints. I only needed a few. So our boy in the mall hooked us up. Our boy hooked us up. There's a place in Merritt Square Mall called I Don't Give a Shirt. That's what it's called. That's the name of the company. <laughs> I don't oh, give a shirt. Right in, um, right right in the center. Of Macy's? Yes. He sits right in the middle. So I went up and talked to him and I asked for prices and I told him, hey, I want to have like, you know, 12, 10, 12 of these shirts printed. 
uh, what would you cost? And he gave me a pretty good rate. He's a nice guy, and he did it while I waited. So I brought him the the graphic and the imagery and stuff like that, and he just he fucking printed it out and did it right there on the spot. So it took him it took him about an hour hour. He's with the audio recorder and can, up in the sound yeah. booth with the guy. We're like trying to figure it out, and during all this shit and running around and getting this and getting the jib set up and and all this and that. This whole time, Jimmy was such a pro, man. He was already getting this backstage B roll shit. That is fantastic. What is B roll for our listeners who might not know yeah. video lingo? B roll is like anything that's uh, anything extra. So he he was getting shots of like um, James, the lead singer, getting ready. Um, he's getting shots of some of the choir practicing over in the corner. Um, any anything that's not going to be any B roll can be anything. It can be shots of like a plant sitting somewhere, or I did see you guys hands doing something. I did or, see you at rehearsal, but also Jimmy before the show was like filming some of the the guitar pedals and the snare, the drums, yeah, and, yeah, and some of the different instruments that were out on stage. Yeah, and that's then some all B roll stuff. Yeah, stuff you just cool. splice in during the show or during a certain scene or whatever. Kind of helps with the editing too. Awesome. So. So you don't have rough cuts. No, I was I was very impressed. Jimmy did a Jimmy did a fantastic job. All, all you guys did. Xavier did a really good job. You did mm-hmm. a good job. I mean, it was. I think I I don't know what the video looks like yet. So mm-hmm. I might be kind of counting my chickens before those eggs are hatched. But uh, I think it's going to turn out really cool. I hope that our our product, our end product, is going to be something that the Playhouse is happy with, and obviously, I hope that mm-hmm. the band is going to be happy with. But I well, think, I'm sure I think they will be. And tomorrow we're going to go grab some more footage. <laughs> yeah, we're going tomorrow at noon um, back up to the Playhouse to get some interior footage of this of the uh, uh, B-roll footage again, but of the Playhouse itself. So Yeah, we want to showcase the actual Playhouse. It's beautiful, man. It's yeah, gorgeous. It's amazing. What would you say? Actually, Stacy said it before the show. Was it yep. like 87 years old or something now? The Playhouse... Was founded in 1922, I believe, and don't cr- quote me on that, Stacy. I apologize, uh, but they are officially now a U.S. national um, historical landmark. Nice. So they qualify for lots of additional grants and things like that. That obviously is help going to be helpful for them. However, they're officially a you know a, a, a historical spot. So because mm-hmm. they're so old, and if you know theater talk uh, or especially older construction. That theater is a vaudeville style theater. So back in the you know nineteen hundred early nineteen hundreds and nineteen twenties, they built theaters different than they do now. Now they've got these giant wings that you can fucking put an eighteen wheeler in if you wanted to. <laughs> Not this one. This one has super narrow wings. Basically, as soon as you go off the stage, you only have about ten feet. That's all you got. So yeah. all yeah. those elaborate sets and I don't know things like a eighteen twenty foot jib crane has to tuck <laughs> and fold into ways that it is really difficult to work with. Because Josh and I, so Josh was my PA for that. And uh, this thing is so big and so heavy, it's not on casters. I was trying to think at night how I can rig something to roll it out. But <laughs> with all the cables and cords from the band and stuff, that would be almost impossible. Yeah. However, Josh was my guy, and he and I fucking manhandled this thing out and pulled it out on stage on and off and on and off, depending on the song. And... uh You're listening to Living Podcariously, bringing you real men's perspectives, unfiltered, unapologetic, and uncensored. Recorded live in the Living Podcariously studio in world-famous Cocoa Beach, Florida. Another episode of Living Podcariously. What up, guys? Woot woot. Aw, yeah. Uh, I am Adam. I'm one of your hosts for the show. Uh, sitting across from me in studio. Uh, I am Tack. And sitting over there in the Lady Chase. Yeah, there's no Andrea tonight. She's oh. She might come join us a little bit later, Tack. I gotta turn on a little bit. She might come join us a little bit later, but she is uh, filling under the weather. So uh, she's taking, taking some time off. That's uh, Gotcha. She's got a little nausea kicking in. You know, it's kind of expected. Just growing with a human. Yeah. Yeah. So sitting over in the big recliner. It's Mr. Wilson. What's up, guys? What's up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, man, we got a lot of stuff to tell our listeners. Holy, Holy shit. Holy shit. Last weekend was <laughs> dope. My God. 
So for our listeners, you guys know we have a close tie-in with one of Brevard's local bands. Not to itemize them out right now, but because we've got a lot of other friends in the community that are musicians. We've got the guys with Trufonic. Love those guys. we got the guys over Fuck with yeah, dude. Power Couch. Right. Evan with Power know. Couch. Great band as well. But this recap is going to be about Hot Pink. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Hot yeah. Pink. So, Jesus, we're just going to kind of open this up for some general discussion here at the beginning of the show. We had the opportunity. We were lucky enough to get in to the Coca Village Playhouse, talk to the director, Stacy, and uh, also talk to the band. They just did the Hot, Hot Pink's The Music of Queen, a tribute show at Coca Village Playhouse. It was so fucking good, dude. Dude, they sold out. I fucking out. love Queen, man, and they fucking nailed it, dude. Yeah, they did. They sold out all three shows. So they had a Friday and a Saturday night show. That was originally all they had. Then they booked a Saturday matinee show, and they sold that one out, too. So that's theater seats, 650 or so seats, approximately. Mm -hmm. And, man, every, there was, every single seat was full, and to include some of the wings, there was some standing yeah, was room. Packed. Yeah, it was it was nuts. We were lucky enough to be able to use some of our processes and, and our package of services through tax company, through attack films. Mm -hmm. We were lucky enough to be able to go film it. And yeah. prep the video. So part of the thing that yeah. Dichotomy Media does is promotions. And, uh, you know, shooting some promotions for, like, the things that we've done over the Playhouse before or just in general. So we're going to mm -hmm. do some promotions for some of our sponsors. But, yeah, man, we, we were lucky enough to do that. So we put together a really cool team. Uh, Tack was the director and executive yeah. producer for the whole thing. Uh, and he was also a shooter, so he had his camera out there, a, a film, you know, uh, just a ton of stuff. Yeah. Uh, he shot band stuff in the past, so he knows what he's doing. Tack knows, really knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, have never held a fancy camera, so I don't know anything about DSLR. I don't know what's better, Canon or Nikon. I don't know any of that shit. Mm -hmm. I know none of it. So yeah. I have to take my training and my direction from Tack in this situation. So... Andrea bought me as a after Christmas present, kind of just, hey, look, here's a really good deal on something. I'm going to buy it for Adam as a cool little gift. She bought me a um, a knockoff brand of a GoPro, mm -hmm. but it was a really, really good knockoff brand of a GoPro. It was just yeah. like a generic, another version of a GoPro just from another company. Uh, and it shot 4K uh, video at 60 frames a second at 170 degree wide angle lens. So uh, when Tack found out I had that, he's like, well, he and Jimmy got together and did their Attack Films meetings and said, <laughs> we could put that on the end of the jib. Now, yeah. a jib is basically like a, in this case, a 20-foot crane, crane yeah. that, mm -hmm. that swings out and dips low and does all this shit. And it's mm -hmm. controlled back from kind of like the backstage area where I was standing. It's great for production value. Yeah, it, yeah, it had some really, really cool shots. Uh, but... I've never worked with one before, so... It's I, tough. It takes practice, especially I, if it was balanced better. I couldn't find all my weights, so... Uh, yeah, that was part of my problem. That was, Yeah, you could see a huge difference. Had it been balanced perfectly, you wouldn't have had as much of an issue. But it still does take practice to... Well, I kind of appreciated it. learning on it a little bit. Now, not to suffer... It didn't suffer the shots, so... The the shots that we're going to use were the nice, calm, sweeping shots, which were mm -hmm. I got a lot of. But you can see when I'm like shifting my weight on my hands, you could see this fucking camera bouncing blah, 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 up on stage. <laughs> yeah. It's very easy to tell that I didn't know the fuck I was doing. Uh, you know what, though? What I will say, uh, being right there, it does not look like you don't know what the fuck you're doing. The rest of us who know you don't know what the fuck you're doing, <laughs> we could tell. I guess awesome. I like the first time I watched you put the like the jib arm, the weighted side, like under your legs and just like to give your arms a break. I'm just like, damn. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a small dude. I mean, I'm not yeah. muscular, but I'm not small. So yeah. the, the, keep in mind, this is only a GoPro sitting on the end of this 18, 20 foot jib arm. Mm -hmm. But the weight of the arm, if not counterbalanced, as Tack was saying, it makes the the mechanism on my end that I'm trying to control, and there's a handle to control the basically the camber of the angle for the camera. Man, I was sweating That's fucking cool. bullets up there, dude. It got <laughs> I got a fucking bruise on my hand, but it was dude, it was a lot of fun. So we uh, we <laughs> I had a couple of shaky moments, and yes, ah, I did yeah. tuck it between my legs up in my nuts one time just to give my get the blood circulating back in my arm for a little bit. <laughs> But uh, I think it was really cool. James, the lead singer of Hot Pink, came out right to the fucking GoPro a couple times and sang right into yeah. it. 
Like, oh, those are going to make such good shots. I hope it's recording. <laughs> I also got to give props to Jimmy as well. Like, when we were, uh, like, trying to get everything set up and everything before this show, like, I had issues. Filmography, right? video maker. I don't know what you want to call it officially. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, of course, Jimmy Klein came out as well because he's also a part of uh, Attack Films as well. Yeah, Mr. Jimmy Klein. And he also runs a company called Jimmy Klein Photography. Indeed. Yeah. Where's your bell at? Where's oh, your bell tag? I don't have it. You know what? I've uh, quarantined the bell for the time being. <laughs> and I say that not for purposes of not having it on the show, but when Alyssa, our, our daughter, was sick upstairs, she had the flu. Mm-hmm. Uh, we she we didn't want her yelling down to get us, so I said, "All right, just hit, ring this a whole bunch of times, and then I'll come up the stairs and see what you need." <laughs> tech's, so tech's kind of sick too; it'll be fine. Just go yeah. get, go get it. <laughs> yeah. It'll be all right. There's only one and type we, uh, of sickness, right? <laughs> <laughs> we also um had some outside that we outsourced. Yep, we sure did. Camera person that was uh, Xavier. Hamilton? Is that his yeah. name? No, Xavier Hamilton oh, sorry. is our buddy. That's our buddy. <laughs> yeah. Cut that out. No, no, that's all right. Xavier Hamilton is a listener of the show. Sorry, sorry. He's a uh he he's also given us money through Patreon. So yeah, yeah, Patreon.com yeah, yeah, yeah. slash Not that there. Xavier. You gotta hit the plug there, but oh well. Ding. Um yeah, the other Xavier. Oh. So we also outsourced uh to Xavier Landers as yes. well. Yes. And, uh, he's yeah. with XDL Studios. He uh he came out, brought his four K resolution. High end DSLR. I don't know. You say the it wasn't DSLR. It wasn't DSLR, but yeah, you had a. I think it was a Sony camera, so it was pretty good. Nice 4K, so should be good. He was. He was brought in. He was a referral, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so our good friends over at Oak and Iron Photography, Kyle and Bianca, referred us to him. I originally hit them up because we had a we had a volunteer uh, who was a shooter who was going to come out and help us shoot, but she couldn't get out of her schedule with work. She she just had a conflict last minute and couldn't come out. So we were stuck trying to fill that last shooter seat with uh with quality. Cuz I knew that I knew that she had quality. I knew she could shoot really well, but I didn't know of anybody else in the community. So we reached out to Kyle and Bianca with Oak and Iron. They do photography, wedding photography, things like that. But uh I said, "Hey, do you guys do video too?" And they said, "Not really, but I got a guy." So I called him mm-hmm. and he immediately said yes. It was it was not even like a a hesitation of an answer. He's like, yes, I'm trying to get my name recognized. I want to come out and, you know, do this with you. I think it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. So he came out now, not to mention. So those were our shooters. I, I kind of was a shooter too, sort of. And we'll you talk were, about that later. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, but, uh, we had, uh, we had some PAs or production assistants that volunteered yep. to come out yep. and help yep. us. So we want to give big props, obviously, to Josh Wilson. He did PA work for us. Man, I was just, I, it was an excuse to run around backstage. Let's, <laughs> let's be fair. Like, the band's dope, and I got to watch their Queen show from 15 feet away, so. Hell yeah. <laughs> we did have the best seats in the house. So. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> to Ricky Rabinowitz uh, and Dan and Stephanie Lynn, they came up to do PA work for us as well. Also. And fucking owned it. Yes. Also, Patreon members. So That's right. Extra thanks. Yes, yes. thanks. Absolutely. They all did a fantastic job. It was perfect. Loved it. All right. So I am so ready to talk shit. Do it. So tell us all about your camera operating, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So TAC has a lot of film equipment with Attack Films, just a ton, because they do okay. professional shoots for movies and for 